Are you experiencing a delay in Logic Pro when you're trying to record? For instance, a vocal or a guitar performance is coming out of your monitors or your headphones a little bit after the initial performance is being given. This is known as latency, and thankfully, I have a quick, easy fix for you. My name is CK, so let's get started. The first thing to consider is make sure that the software and the drivers for your own audio interface are completely up to date. That interface is the first line of a signal chain going into Logic, so making sure that that is completely up to date is gonna be your first line of defense for preventing latency. If you have confirmed that your drivers are completely up to date and you're still experiencing latency, Let's hop into Logic and I'll show you what to do. So it really doesn't matter what your template looks like inside of Logic and whether you have a bunch of tracks, whether they're audio or MIDI, this next step is going to resolve the latency issue for any time that you hit the record button. So let me show you where to go. We're gonna go up here to Logic Pro's main drop menu. We're gonna go to settings, audio. We're gonna go over one tab into the general tab. And then down here at the bottom, where it says low latency monitoring mode, make sure that that is clicked on. And then we're just gonna close out. And now I want you to have a go at tracking your instrument or your vocal performance and see if that immediately didn't just resolve the issue. If you're still experiencing latency problems, there's two more things that we can do. Let's hop back in. We're gonna go back to the main Logic Pro menu, settings, audio. Now this time we're gonna stay within the first tab known as devices. And there's two areas that we're gonna look at. That's gonna be the buffer size and the process buffer range. So really just kind of keep this simple. The smaller the number, the faster that the signal processing is gonna be from your instrument to your audio interface to logic and back again. However, the smaller the number, the more computer power is required to send that signal fast. Some of the issues that you may come across is if you try to go to something like 64 or 32 samples, you're likely gonna hear popping when you record. You're gonna have to do a little bit of trial and error to figure out what buffer size you can actually record at before your system either crashes or you get the popping sounds. I'm on a little bit beefier of a desktop computer here, so I find myself comfortably recording at a buffer size of 128 or 256. No latency problems, no popping. So if you learn that you can record at a 128 or a 256 buffer size, do your recording at that buffer size. And then when it comes time to mix, you could come back into this menu and drop it down to something like 1024. And then you're gonna have a lot more processing power left over for mixing. And then the second setting that we could change to help lower latency is gonna be the process buffer range. Same as the buffer size above it. If you click small, more computer power is gonna go in to make it sure that that signal chain is working as fast as possible. Good for recording. Just remember that if while you're mixing and adding plugins, you start to feel like there's a lag and a drag and you're getting the system overload warning, come back in here and just change that buffer range to large. 128 and small, recording. 1024, large, mixing. And don't forget that after you decide if you are recording or mixing, you need to make sure you hit this apply button. Otherwise, the buffer size and the buffer range aren't going to stick. And once you see the apply button grayed out like this, then you will see what buffer ranges and sizes you're currently working with. And that's it. I really hope that this helped resolve your issues. I know that there's nothing more frustrating than trying to record and everything feels lagged. So hopefully that's a good fix and a little food for thought to close this video out updating software and drivers on your audio interface, always a good practice. However, being a Logic Pro user, try to get in the habit of not updating your OS every new update that comes out. You always wanna stay about one to two updates behind from the latest update. Because what happens to us all the time is something inside of Logic Pro breaks, but more importantly, your plugins break. Sometimes it takes developers a really long time to catch up with the latest Mac OS or Logic Pro update. Just a little tip for you, if you're ever finding, oh man, things are just broken and not working, updating to the latest OS might be the problem for that too. So just something to keep in mind. My name's CK, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next one.